I want to take a few minutes to talk about the emotional shockwave phenomenon, uh, which uh, I encountered very early in family research. It hasn't been well written up, but it is a distinct entity. Um, let me give one example of this. I think of one that's um, prominent in the research. This was a mother in her late 50s who died suddenly of a stroke. She had about 10 children, most married and living in the same section of the state. The oldest grandchild, a young man in dental school, had a car wreck en route to her funeral and knocked out his front teeth. The father drank heavily for about 18 months after the mother's death, and then it was discovered he had diabetes. A single son who had been living at home, lost his job, began drinking, had his first trouble with police. A daughter living a thousand miles away had no visual reaction to the time to the mother's death. But within six months, one of her daughters began serious behavior problems and her other daughter was seriously injured in a bicycle accident. A son-in-law had a heart attack and another daughter had a gallbladder operation with serious surgical complications. And all of these in this family occurred within about 18 months of the mother's death. My initial reaction to this shockwave phenomenon was to regard it as a coincidence. But on further investigation, this occurs so frequently that now I do a survey of the family field to check for this phenomenon in every family I see. It is so routine for family member to obliterate any connectedness between this death or this traumatic event and the events that follow that the the history about it is confused and obliterated. I wouldn't be willing to say that this death causes this, but I would be willing to say that these kinds of human problems follow a death in time sequence in a fair percentage of families. An example in which um, the connectedness between the death or the traumatic event and the manifestation was that of a grandson arrested for shoplifting on the day his maternal grandmother was hospitalized for the removal of a benign breast tumor. The family anxiety, of course, had treated it as if this was a cancer and the boy's reaction would be based on the family perception of it. In trying to get the history, the family members were so focused on the behavior problem in the boy, which happened some, and when he was in the eighth grade, and it was so difficult to finally even hear about this operation, which occurred simultaneously with the shoplifting. And when the family remembered this, this was a breast tumor the grandmother had when she was 61 or 62. So it's complex to put these uh, events together in terms of the uh, time sequence. The family tendency to obliterate connectedness is so great I never tell them about it until well in family psychotherapy. People seem to be threatened by the implication that the functioning itself is dependent on what goes on in another family member. In some 3,000 detailed family histories, I found only one in which a family member indicated some awareness of a connectedness. This father began by saying, my family was doing well until a year ago last May, about 18 months before, when my daughter was married. Until that time, everybody was healthy and there were a few doctor bills. Since then, my wife has had a gallbladder removed, a spinal fusion, and has been hospitalized for depression. She's been so unhappy with houses, we've moved four times. I had a heart attack and my son flunked out of college. And this all had occurred within the 18 months. As I would see this one, the family or the 
functioning of the family was very dependent on the presence of this daughter. And when she moved out, there was some kind of disruption that was manifested in this way.